Tachibana, you always appear out of nowhere on a rainy day. <laughs> Seriously, that's probably like my favorite line I've heard so far because when you think about it, it's so true. I mean, like, every time, like, she's there, he's there, it's like, it's raining, and she's there wet in the rain without the umbrella in that one episode, this and this, uh, I'm sorry, I'm getting all excitable with my words and my feels, but I really love that line when he, Mr. Kondo tells Akira, you know, it, it's so truthful, you always appear, you know, uh, <laughs> and it, it, you always appear out of nowhere on a rainy day, because on episode 7, Mm, uh, just so... Uh. Anyway, after the rain, I stand by what I'm saying, seven episodes in, and so far, Anime of the Year, I top one I've been enjoying this year, and I really hope to catch up on stuff like Eurocamp, and, uh, what was that one where the girls are wanting to go for that trip? It sounds so sweet. And those ones right there are really affecting me. Like, I really want to continue those and get me, but... Besides Mitsuboshi Colors and uh, Seven Heavenly Virtues, this is the one that's really been just like the top dogs for me this year so far. And this one is just so up there. And just everything about it. The storyline, again, as I've mentioned, like probably getting repetitive now, but it's so genuine. So real. It, oh, every time. Every time. I mean... I can't, I, every episode I'm either like really feeling it there, squeeze on that little bit, uh, or it, it just, I mean, I can't control, like I, I, I can get emotions with my movies and my films and my anime and everything I do, read a book, reading a book, the stuff gets me. Every year I finish reading A Christmas Carol, because I love to read A Christmas Carol, it's my favorite, one of my favorite books, Dickens is great, great expectations as well, and you know, when you hear like those lines and they get to you and like the ending and the way it turns out and how Scrooge went from this to this. Even just reading the book I've read like every year for my whole life, I tear up. Watching the movie of it, the good movie of it, Alistair Sim, tear up. Watching other anime movies, I've seen episodes of shows and stuff that have that emotional impact time and time again. They still get me. And if I go back and watch some of it, it still gets me. That's how effective it is. Which is why small, you know, a silent voice should not have gotten snubbed by the anime awards or the frickin' Oscars, because that is true, beautiful storytelling and animation, and just gets you everywhere, as opposed to, I'm sorry, I'm, uh, I won't go on anymore, but this is what's so good about After the Ring. It really is, again, everything comes together. The story, the characters, the two of them, Kondo and Tachibana, the music, the... You know, you get the, the you know, I get those art. I, I love my artsy shots and, and cinematography and all that stuff. There, the music plays so well. The score, and then every time I see the opening ending, the opening just makes me feel so good inside. And the ending always just gets me feel like, mmm, touches my heart. I guess before I go on about it, and then again, I love what the art style again too is. The design, she's so beautiful. The eyes are so big, and then the colors, how the colors can shift and change through it. And I like how sometimes they get like that watercolor effect to it, which is a nice touch. Just so much is put into this, I think. And I see a lot of people responding so well to this on Twitter, on YouTube, other videos and reviews, and people commenting on me and talking with other people and saying, hey, love the review, please do this, do more on this. And that's what I'm trying to do because people really seem to like this show and want to know more about it and hear about it, whatever and discussing with other people and seeing other people online talk about it. Positive effects. And here I am thinking, thank you for something as awesome as this, instead of me having to suffer through the countless, endless, boring shonen and stuff. Because this is real, this is heartfelt, this is true, genuine. I use that word a lot, but it really feels like it. Quick recap, I guess, of the episodes. I don't have an umbrella. But, uh, I mean, as we go through there, with the intro, as I said in my first video, check it. You know, links are somewhere around here. But check it. Uh, here we have uh, the douchebag guy, Kase. That's his name? Kase, the douchebag? That episode there where he's like, oh, you gotta go and date with me. And how she read there, it was a good episode. I still hate it when the guy f***ed her. Because you just want to, like, like, everyone, you just want to punch him. You just really want to... 
you know, you just really want to, like, how dare you, you bastard. And then she goes on the same date with, you know, her manager, and she enjoys that one, though, of course, which is so cute and all this. And I just like how she wants to get to know more about him. And he's always like, no, you're too young, I'm too old, I'm nobody, I'm a nothing. Every episode he feels that way, and I'm like, damn, man, stop feeling so hard on yourself. And this girl here, I don't know, open up. She's something for you, so maybe you should start feeling better about yourself and just stop feeling like this. I mean, come on, man, I'm rooting for you. I'm rooting for her. I'm rooting for her. I root for people. You know, so that was cute and fun. And then the ending where her mom throws her the ad, and she's like, which one's the one that he had? Uh, and then we have episodes again where uh, his son, she spends the day with his son, Yuto. And uh, it's pretty cute. They have a hamster, and then the hamster's like, oh, so I didn't need all these books about being a manager. I just need a hamster. And everyone starts liking it. And then she gets jealous because everyone's getting around him because of the cute hamster and, you know, giving him advice. She's like, maybe I can give him advice, and that way we can get closer and tell him how to take care of it. And then finally she's like, stop it. Get back to work, you idiots. It's all just a stupid hamster. And then finally she's like, if you want advice from now on, you come to me for hamster advice. Okay? Okay? And then, like, here, take this. And then it, it was cute, her little jealous side there. And I like when she's in there with the son, bonding with him, learning about this, and getting to know more through the son about uh, Mr. Kondo. Sneaking and taking a peek through the wall there to see, like, what he does, how he loves books, and, like, that, like, pure, true literature type stuff. And it looks like he writes, maybe, and all that kind of stuff there. And so there's, she can see, like, there's something more to him, the passion that she wants to learn. She wants to know more about him. The son makes her high, and she gets overheated. Nice and sweaty. Falls out, you know, and then helps her. And just more bonding stuff there, and then, like, to see how he's like with his son. So that adds, you know, like, more points for him, for her, you know. Uh, and I like how she looked She looked like a mom. She looked like a mom. She had herself all up and sitting there cooking for him. Uh, and then after that, we have uh, her friend Haruka. Uh, little track one. Cute little short hair. Little freckles. Darker skin. She cute. She pretty cute. How the, like, a little emotional thing that, like, how they used to be friends and... We'll be like this, you know, maybe we're drifting, but we'll, meet the, we'll be together again someday. And then how they not, and then this is the first time they've, like, walked to school together. It means something to her. Here's these cute little girls talk about, like, this little creepy cat thing with a weird face. And talking about how if you wear this, you're going to get closer to the person that you like. So then she's like, tell me more. I love when she does that stuff. Like, what? Oh, I didn't mean to be, like, creepy or awkward. By just shoving my face in there and listening to your conversation. Or with him, you know, with Mr. Kondo, and just all like, man, is she mad at me? I love that stuff, but she's so cute and adorable. Oh, she's so pretty. The eyes, the lips, every, mm, such good, beautiful stuff. Damn, proud of the design and animation. So it's like more of a closer thing in there, and then she's trying to find, like, she spends so much on the little coin things. <laughs> Trying to get that one, and it's all cute, because, like, how awkward and silly. And a lot through that episode, episode six there, was really... I think the... I love the music. The music in the in the piece, just, it, it's... It's there, you hear it, you feel it, you, you know, you know it, and... It was really, really strongly represented in this episode, because a lot of it was just, like, shots of the life passing by, you know artsy shots, you know, all those little shots of like, like, here's some flowers, here's the breeze blowing, stuff like that, and then her work, him, all that stuff there, and then just the music just taking over. You don't need mindless freaking action and stupid shouting, bah, 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 bah. you know, the, the Sparta type of bullshit we get from everything else that's popular right now, where it's all shouting and action and just kind of like, you can't, people, most people can't sit and watch just like a two minute montage segment of nothing but freaking beautiful scored music playing while you're seeing like little scenery shots and stuff like that or the characters going through without any sound I mean without any like dialogue or conflict and the conflict is through the emotional piece through the music and the shots and the art and the and I really feel sad for, for the majority of people that are into that other stuff where they can't just this stuff bores me. This isn't interesting. This stuff is because you have, you have freaking attention problems. Ah, oh, that just this stuff is beautiful compared to the same old tournament art crap after crap. This is beautiful storytelling. I mean, and anime does a lot of it, not just this year's, but there's a lot out there. There's a lot of movies and everything just. Whew. Anyway, it's beautiful. I love, like, 
then her friend, you know, she, she gives it a piece of, here, here's a little pink cat one from that thing that I didn't want. And then she's like, hmm, and then she's sitting there, they're reminiscing, and you see how cute she was when she was younger? There she had this cute little shortcut, adorable. And then our woman, they were even younger, and she had the little twin tails, and they're running and catching up, and she's like, it was so sweet, it was touching. Shame that they've drifted apart, but I hope maybe, you know, they come together again as friends. <clears throat> and then at the end, you know, she throws her a thing there, going like, we're more than just friends and track and school, right? And I'm like, oh. And then she gave her the thing that she was looking for, so she cares, and then she bumps him in the bookstore. Mr. Kondo, and then she's like, I just want to get to know more about you. What book do you recommend? She knows he likes to read, and uh, he's like, oh. It's like, you know, and all these nice little poetic, beautiful lines of dialogue just spitting out of their mouths. So much stuff. You know, basically she just wants to know more, know more about him. It's really cute. And then she gets, like, this one book about track and running. He finds a book, which is obviously from, you know, you can tell, like, it's like his ex. And it really affects him. Then his whole mood just changes after he gets in and, like, picks up the book. And it ends there, and then we go on to episode 7, the one that everyone's like, episode 7, episode 7, and I am not reading the manga, no nothing modest, which is good because, spoilers, I really like this, but I hear like it's a big impact, and uh, everyone's like, oh, is this the one where this happened, This or is this the one where it's like, yeah, finally, and I'm like, ooh, oh my, oh, I, can't, I can't wait to see it as much as everyone's been telling me, you have to see this one, catch up to this. And it lived up to the hype, it was a very sweet episode again, it... They got closer, and the whole stuff where I'm, like I said, I'm rooting for the underdog. I'm rooting for him, rooting for her, and how he always feels like this about himself, negative about himself, and he's like, I'm too old, I'm nothing. You know, I'm a guy who's never finished things. I'm a guy who has no th nothing to be proud of. And I'm like, oh, we're all there. I have so much half-finished scripts, half-finished works of, like, art and characters and stories and manga ideas and artwork that I have that's just like you know so we all feel that I have all that stuff like half finished stuff piled up because I constantly you know my ADD I guess moment is where I I'm on one thing I'm like oh I have another idea for something else or I have another thing to draw or and then that get pushed aside this so it's like I need to stick my mind just never shuts up in my creativity but I feel like you know there's so much I just want to finish and but I, I feel proud of the stuff I come up with and I want to bring those to life, the ones that aren't finished, because I really want people to see and enjoy this stuff, the stuff that I enjoy. And I'm like, dude, come on. I feel like that. A lot of people feel like that. But, you know, you gotta just start positive, uh, just knowing that you are, you know, someone special. You're something, you know, you have that son. She looks up to you. I mean, you are special to someone, and that someone cares about you, so keep your head up high. Same with her, and then she just wants to get to know more about him when he's sitting there just affected by that book, and he's on his, you know, the computer at work, and she's looking cute again with her little sandwiches, again, little two little sandwiches and the little uh, tomatoes, and she's asking about the stuff there, and he's about the book, and she just wants to get to know, and then he's like, oh, you know, it's just a book, blah, blah, blah. She's like, oh, it's someone I know. We're always like, oh, and then she, get, like, she perks up, she peps up, looking all cute, and it was so, like, you know, wonderful to see how she's like, so happy for him and happy to know this. She's like, oh, that's wonderful because it's like, no, you're a good guy because you are wonderful. You like to read books and you know what you're talking about back about those books and you're this and it's neither to know this. And then she seemed really happy and excited and pure and full of joy that, you know, love that she was talking about him and this about him and knowing about him. And then he sits there and says, you know nothing about me. And I'm like, I was she and then I felt the same at the same time but damn it and then it it affects her and then there's the typhoon and she goes there and then that's when she appears there wet in the rain he's sick he has a cold and she's there at the door of his house when he's sick and that's when he has the thing there it's like it's like is something happened at work and she's just down like this and he's like okay um, then this one says, Tachibana, you always appear out of nowhere on a rainy day. Still love that line. And then his, like, lawn monologue dialogue bit at the end. Just like, mm -hmm. oh, it's, it's, there's so much beautiful dialogue and just, it was so poetic and just, <sighs> ooh. And during this rain, he sees her and she's talking and 
she's crying and upset and he's upset about him as the storms boom the power goes out and you can see the rain drops and the rain from the windows i love that little effect where you can see it pouring down from the lighting and everything Whew, hooey. and uh they're just both kind of like these two people that are just like I don't know if it's the right way of saying it, like lost or just something that needs to be filled and like together and he's like you know when I'm with you he's thinking when I'm with you because she's like is there something wrong with me do you not like me do you not like this am I not good enough for you and then he just springs up instantly no 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 are you kidding you're wonderful there's so much good about you how can no one not you know like you know he's like and you can tell it seems this has honestly come from like he really feels these these feels, these words, these, th this, th this, <laughs> I'm at a loss for words, because I'm still just affected by it so much, but he really just tells her, like, he's like, no, you're a wonderful girl, there's so much about you, blah, 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 and I'm doing a bad job of saying it, but go watch people, it, go watch this, it's beautiful, do yourself a favor and watch it. Then he says, after she looks up and says, and he's feeling her, and he's looking at there, his eyes are kind of sparkling, and she looks so pretty with the tears going down, and... Whew, he just looks at her, and... He, yeah, and why, when he sees her through all this, he's like, he just looking at her, and he hear him say, you know, he's like, I want to save her from this anxiety, she's, you know, even if I don't have the right to do so, you know, right now. And it's like... And it's like, as he's saying all this, as he's doing all this dialogue, you get like the little bubbles, the raindrops falling through, and the music's hitting it perfectly again, and connecting with uh, stuff, and then the colors are shifting and everything, and it's just like, you are being embraced by this entire scene, and the, to those who made this, and voice it, direct it, write it, animate it, everything about it, it's like, you can, you're there, you are, like, you're them right now. And they're, hmm. and as he continues... He's like, this feeling, it'd be so frivolous to call it love. He's like, and then my other favorite line that goes with the one where he says you always appear out of nowhere, because he says, frivolous to call this love, and continued. Now in this moment, I'll close my umbrella and get wet in your rain. I can't, I have to like, do different takes because I'm starting to get all, but it's so beautiful. It's like, oh my gosh. The idea of, like, I can, like, <sighs> anyway, something that's youth, something that's youthful in every aspect, and something you shouldn't touch, just from the sense of nostalgia. Right now, I'm the only one that can protect that. Now, in this moment, I'll get wet alongside you in this pouring rain. It was so beautiful. I love, oh my gosh. He's like, now, it's like, I'm going to protect that. I'll be with you. And it's just so... Oh, and then he goes up there and he's like, I have to. And then he embraces her. And she's like, you can see in her eyes, they're just so wide. And it's like, she can't believe it. Eyes are so wide, blushing, the tears. And he's like, really like, lovingly embracing her. And, you know, it's like, on her, you know, the hand, you know, like, I'm here, you know. And I, you know, you're this. And maybe I should, you know. And you make me happy. He even said, like, when I'm with you, you know, it's like, you bring this kind of happiness, this kind of feelings towards me that it just makes me you know and then she's there and she back and then it's such a beautiful moment oh my gosh i'm like just crying up thinking of it right now and then he's like oh crap i caught myself and he's like oh that's friends that's friends that's what i mean and she's like friends he's like oh yeah totally mm. You know, you're wonderful girl, and then he, like, has her, you know, go home, and she's like, be careful, on your way out there, he's like, be careful, and she drives off, she's looking back in the rain, he's all, like, goofy, you know, I love, he's, he's so goofy, he's so wonderful, she's adorable, she's so wonderful.
Holy crap, I almost forgot. And then after the whole hub thing, now we're going to just navigate just a little lewd because that's how I am here. She goes home and it's like, it's so beautiful, the music, how she feels after what he said. He, it looks like he regrets, like, oh, I shouldn't have said friends. She's like friends, so she's heartbroken. So I'm looking forward to episode eight where it's like, he says like the friends thing just to be like, oh crap, what if I don't want to hug her and told her all these nice things? And she's like, no, I want to step this up from friendship to more of a relationship. It's like, it's so cute. So awesome. I love it. This is breaking my heart. So affected by this. Oh my gosh. But she's in bed and now she caught the cold from him. And then everyone works like, huh, ain't that something? The day she's now home with a cold and the day he comes back, ain't that something? And then like the one friend of hers that just started working there because she did. <laughs> you know, like, you know, how cute it is where she started working there because Mr. Kondo did. And he's like, hey, ain't that something? That's weird. And then the douche guy's like, Ugh, you're clueless, aren't you? It's like, yeah, because we all know. It's like, ain't that funny? But anyway, she caught from him. But yeah. Duh. She's lying there, all cute. And she looks so pretty just lying there, sweating. And she's sitting there thinking with her big eyes. And then she's like reaching out. She's imagining the hug that they shared. And now she's naked. She's a cute, cute little butt. But anyway, little boobies. But hugging them. And uh, you get the music up. It's so touching. Tears, how she's feeling. And then there, and then poof, it goes away, and she's all, huh, huh, and she's like blushing, looking cute, and it's such a good shot, and she's all like sweaty, and so then she gets up, and I'm like, did she just have a wet dream? Dang, girl! But it, it was awesome. After the rain episode 7, it was like, oh my gosh. After what happened, and then, like, I gotta stop myself from all the, I need to take, like, a break for, like, a week or so. Because when I don't like, when I really want to, like, a series like these, for the most part, I really don't like, I, I'm not into the whole binge watching, unless I need to catch up with the next season with certain shows. And I'm like, oh crap, I better binge watch some of these so I can catch up with the new stuff that's coming back. I did that for Doctor Who, and I've done that for, like, Once Upon a Time before that turned to crap, and it's, anyway. But I like to just kind of like, I don't know, I like I don't like to rush because then it's like it's over. And then especially with anime, when you only get like these 12 episodes, it's so sad to see it end and then have it to be over and to say goodbye to this story, these characters, where it's like, I know I've rat on a lot about the shows where you get 500, 600, 800, 1,000 freaking episodes of just nonsense and bull crap with these series. And it's all just 90% the same cliched crap. But if there's, again, I can see why people really do enjoy it, even if it's like mostly filler or whatever, because you get to spend time with these characters that you love. That's the one thing I will say, where it's like, which is a shame for, sometimes it's good when you get these 12 episode ones or 24 episode ones or 13 episode ones there, and it's like, it tells the story enough, that's it, I don't want it to continue. But then there are some of them where I feel like, boy, I wish they had another 12 episodes, or at least an OVA, or at least a movie, just to give us true closure or something, or maybe bring us back years later for a reunion or something. This is one of those ones where it's like, damn, after 12 episodes, it's going to end. I don't think it's going to get a proper ending because, sadly, the manga, last I checked, two chapters left. And I think by the time I put this out, it might already be just one chapter left before it's over or it's already done. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, I just heard about this series. I just got into this series. And now, and I'm like, there's a manga of it. And then now the manga is over. And it's like, is it going to have a closure? Is it going to have a conclusion? Are, you know, is there something, how does it end? Will it end properly when it's ending so abruptly, it seems? Will this anime end abruptly? Now that the manga's over, will we get a second season if this doesn't end the way it should? If it, Can we get a season two or it's like, and then that's the downside. This probably won't get another season, but then we'll get more Attack on sh** and more Boku no Pico Academy N. Mm, what all it is is like tournament arcs and battle and training arcs and just shouting and screaming and non-stop action because you can't sit and enjoy good music and animation and story and character and development. And like I mentioned before on this, it's like the Hannibal series was a hit and it's a beautiful show. Three seasons, no actual action happens. It's all dialogue and everything. Just like certain movies where you can sit through people, why can't you sit through three hours or two hours of something where it doesn't have to have explosions and mind-numbing action? Stuff like this just deserves, and I've seen it's popular. I, the manga seems to be a good, popular hit. In the anime, I've seen so much people, good pluses and praise and discussion about this with people that I don't know, people that I do know, acquaintances, and 
it's really nice to see people really take this and welcome it and then embrace it like Kondo did with Tachiman. I really hope after 12 episodes it gives us a good end closure, but I really don't feel like it'll be enough. So I really hope they give us another one where they can end it properly, like the manga, and I hope the manga ends it properly. I just want... It's a beautiful, real, genuine, amazing story. <sighs> Pop Team Epic and Devil Man Cryberry, f*** both those. In terms of animation, f*** it. In style, f*** it. Devil May Cry Baby at least had some story. But it's like, anime of the year, f*** that. This series, in my opinion, and a lot of people I talk to just are so impressed by it. This deserves the praise. This deserves, you know, the anime of the year status as of now. And I, you know, who knows what the next few months will bring. But right now, this thing is just perfect. I just absolutely adore it. And I'm glad other people do too, and I want everyone else to adore it too. And I really am sad that the manga is ending. I hope it's not too soon, and I really hope this gets another season if it doesn't end properly. Because I feel like in the manga and anime, it should end properly. I want it to end properly. Because I feel like everyone's opinions and tastes are their own. Like me, I don't sit there and go read a critique, read a review, watch a review, etc. like that. And then suddenly that changes my, you know, someone could say something like, oh, because again, example, I'm tired of superhero movies. And someone's like, Black Panther is really good. And I'm like, but it's still a superhero movie. You can't deny that. Quit saying it's anything but. It really is just a superhero movie. And I'm not interested in superhero movies anymore. So just because everyone's like, A+, plus, A+, plus, A+, plus, I'm going to go see some other independent film or <laughs> hope for Army of Darkness 2 or something. But, so when I give mine out there, I try to sit there and just explain why I like it and I'm happy other people like it. And then talk, and most of the time I try not to be too negative on the other stuff, but sometimes when you see stuff like this, it comes out. Only human. It happens. And sorry, this is obviously going to be a long video. But it's covering a lot of stuff on this beautiful series. But there are some times where I'm like, I don't want to sit there and say, hey, you're only going to go like what you like. I'm only going to go check out the stuff that I already know that I like. And stuff that might pique my interest. If there's something I know for sure I'm not going to like, I don't care how many times you tell me it's good. I will not put that on my high priority list and then when i do see it i already feel like see i can already cut out why it is bad like i'll give stuff a shot i've given attack on titan and Boku no Piro a shot before i end up knowing like i knew oh you know it's not my style but after all the praise i still checked them out watched the first seasons of both and then after three episodes in that three episode rule which i don't believe in but for them i did the three episode rule and then i dropped them i'm not saying you have to like this or else you know, but I'm just like, I just give my opinion, and I'm only going to talk about stuff I like, so you'll never see reviews of me talking about stuff I don't like, because I don't see the point. It's only going to be stuff I like, and I try not to sit there and say, hey, go watch this, go see this, so like, I suggest it, but I'm like, I know if it's like, if it's not your thing, ah oh well. But, there are a few exceptions that I do sometimes, and Go Ahead No Katachi, A Silent Voice is one of them, After the Rain is another one. Where I'm like, you know what, I highly suggest, highly recommend watching this series. Reading the manga, I, I'm going to go read the manga as soon as I can. It's a joy. It's beautiful. It's different. It's wonderful. And beating that horse again, it's genuine. So good. I look forward to the last five episodes. And I hope it's not the last five episodes. For more. So until next time, I don't know. Love anime. Any kind it is. I know good, bad, ones I like, ones I don't like. Just love it. It's beautiful stuff. Keep it fapping. <laughs>